So uh, you've also said that you think that girls who do fans should still be considered. I know there's yes. been a lot of like chatter about that and creators versus. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think there is a divide in opinion about performers place in the industry? So I have this theory. It does not apply to everybody, but it's something that I've noticed happening a lot mm. where whenever you have a girl that's been in the industry for a while for, on the studio side, um, things have gotten a lot better, but pretty recently things were pretty awful in terms of like uh, lines being blurred and people not knowing if they had to the director in order to get mm -hmm. work and you would show up to set not knowing who your scene partner is or even what you're doing sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, like that used to be really, really common. And so I think that a lot of people have kind of comforted themselves by telling themselves that because they went through all of those awful things, the bad agents, the model houses, and being told to do stuff that you're not comfortable with doing on set and going to conventions and your mm -hmm. feet bleeding because you're like standing on your yeah. heels all day and like all that kind of stuff. You go through all of that and now you have earned the title of porn star. Yeah. So seeing a girl who is making videos in her bedroom on her phone with her boyfriend, total comfort, everything exactly the way she wants, everything is edited perfectly to her standards. She owns all the content. Owns all the content, yeah. is making all of the money off of it. And then she's like, yeah, I'm a porn star. It, it pisses some of them off because they're like, you didn't go through all of the work that I went through mm -hmm. in order to achieve that title. And in my opinion, it's just, if you do porn and you star in that porno, you are a porn star. It doesn't mean that everyone is a gigantic celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that saying that somebody like Miss Be Nasty or Kazumi they like, aren't porn stars because they haven't done mainstream scenes or Kazumi has now, but there are people that were saying like, oh, Kazumi can't call herself a porn yeah. star. She just does OnlyFans. That's silly. If somebody does porn, in my mind, they're a porn star. Um, I think that it's kind of a weird topic and I hope that there are less people that think that you have to go through those things in order to be a porn star. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, if bad things happen to, to you, the, the course of like a bunch of bad things happened to me when I first started, um, I, I don't think that that, gave me the title of porn star mm -hmm. um and we should just all be nicer to each other i think yeah. a whore is a whore is a whore um the porn girls aren't better than the only fans girls and they're not better than the cam girls and they're not better than the escorts and they're not better than the strippers and like people all do this infighting of oh mm -hmm. i'm not as bad as that other sex worker because mm -hmm. i'm x y and z and yeah we call it the hierarchy yeah, yeah. And, and i've been i've done amateur porn i've done camming i've been a hooker like just like a hundred dollars you can do whatever you want to me i've been a high-end escort where it's like, insane amount of money just to have dinner with me. I have done studio porn. I have been a sugar baby, I've been a stripper, like all of the different types of sex work. And they're all really fucking similar. Mm. Um, you can be a an escort and people are gonna wanna talk to you all day. You can be a sugar baby and somebody's just gonna like want you to show up and fuck. You can be a porn girl and be treated like a fucking princess on set. You can be an OnlyFans girl and just like, have really high end, high production value videos. I feel like a lot of times when people are like, oh, well, I'm different from the other person because they don't do what I do. It's like, they're probably also doing what you do. Like mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's all very interconnected and the outside world kind of sees us as all the same. Like you're not gonna be treated better than another sex worker just because like, oh, well, I I talk to my clients, so I'm better. That's, that's just silly. <laughs> I was gonna say like, cause all of them experience the same stigma yes. right around mm -hmm. sex work mm -hmm. so we're all going to be stronger if we stick together yeah and all the infighting of like oh you can't use that title or oh i'm better than you because of whatever it's just serving the outside world being mean to us like it's mm -hmm. not helping you it's not making you any higher in your position in the world yeah um, it's not protecting you from any sort of social stigma or any sort of violence that comes your way because you're a sex worker it only hurts our community and mm -hmm. helps people who want to hurt us yeah it's crazy though like it has changed so much in the last few years i mean i remember when i first started 25 years ago <laughs> um that there was it was a very normal and accepted thing for porn stars to like look down on escorts yeah i mean and and it would be very common that if a girl escorted on the side and she was paired with another partner that if that other girl found out she would not work with her because she escorted mm -hmm. and it was like well i'm a porn star but she's a hooker and i'm not going right. there you know and it's like mm -hmm. well we all do the same testing um but yeah i mean and and look people will sometimes say that it's about like safety and i get that mm -hmm. and and sure and like whatever you want to 
whatever works for you and your sense of safety about your own body is yeah. 100% your decision. But there was definitely an element of like, I'm better than you because I'm a porn star and you're a hooker. Right. Um, and when it comes to testing and, and those kind of standards, I've heard that argument before of, oh, well, you don't know if they're fucking their clients the condom or not. And it's like, you don't know if the girl who's not escorting is fucking guys on Tinder or not. Yeah. You, you don't know what they're getting up to. They can be going to sex parties. They could be like flying to Berlin and getting fucked in like the sex clubs there and then yeah. coming back and doing a scene with you the next week. Like we, there's a certain level of risk because we can't sit there and be with our scene partners throughout the whole week to make yeah. sure that they're not testing, sorry, not fucking anybody who's untested. Um, and I feel like if you need to put certain boundaries in place to make yourself feel safer, then you should absolutely be allowed to do that. But we should be thinking critically about why we feel certain ways about certain things. Yeah. And I definitely think that any opinion that starts with, I am better than this other person because of this arbitrary thing that I decided is different about the way I do things, then mm -hmm. that's, that's a little silly. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.